Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you're joining us from. We're very pleased to have you join uh, WTA's second webinar on the topic of understanding teleport certification. And so we're looking forward to a very interesting uh, about 50 to 55 minute discussion. My name is Robert Bell. I'm the executive director of the World Teleport Association, uh, which exists for the, the purpose to advocate for the interests of teleport operators, in particular independent teleport operators, and also to promote excellence in their operations and their technology and their business practices. WTA consists of about 140 teleport operators, satellite carriers, and technology providers in some 46 nations around the world. And as any of you in the business probably know, we are a vital market channel for satellite and fiber services. Uh, some studies we did a few years ago showed that uh, global revenues equal to about 27% of all satellite transmission spending goes through the accounts of teleport operators. And also that in terms of technology spending, um, the, a lot of emphasis is put on broadcast operations, of course, as buyers. But it turns out that on average, teleports are spending about five times more um, than, than a typical broadcast operation is doing. Our membership is, this is a representative list. There's quite a few more, of course, but it, it, can, it demonstrates that we spread very widely across the independent teleport community, both from, from, very, from small companies that are not very well known up to the name brands, as well as most of the major satellite operators and the technology providers who actually make sure that the, the signal gets where it's supposed to get in the right, in the right uh, form. So a couple of housekeeping um, suggestions before we start. Um, during this webinar, all attendees will be in listen-only mode, but we do want to hear from you throughout the course of this, and so you'll find on your control panel a section called questions. And if, you, if you'll type something in there and send it, to, send it uh, I'll see that, and I will work that into our discussion as we get through it. This uh, webinar is being recorded, and a recording will be made available to, to all of you, as well as to uh, other people who might who are not unable to attend, as well as to any presentations. Um, that are part of this. If you uh, have technical support issues, which we have not yet had, but if you do, you might want to jot down the appropriate number on the screen to, uh, for someone to call to help you out with getting into the system or uh, getting back into it in case you get knocked out. OK, today's agenda. Uh, I'm going to speak for a few minutes on just the background of teleport certification to make sure that we all understand the basics of it together. And then we're going to turn to the real experts. Um, we're looking forward to hearing from Dr. Matthias Reed, who's uh, Executive Vice President for Technical Operations at Signalhorn Trusted Networks, as well as uh, Ang which has gone through the certification process, I should say, as well as Angus Blackwood, Managing Director of Hawk CX. Uh, Angus is WTA's uh, WTA auditor. I think so far he's, he's our most experienced one uh, to date, and then there'll be an opportunity to, as I say, bring in some of the questions that you may have in with the panelists. So let me tell you about teleport certification. Uh, this was created by WTA, and the program's existed for about 20 months. It's created to do two things. Um, one was to create, of course, an objective, transparent, and internationally accepted program, but it, it serves two masters. Um, for teleport operators, its intention is to document the quality of their operations for customers and strategic partners. Um, so that if, you are, if your teleport is a uh, very high quality operation that charges a uh, commensurate price, um, you have some means for justifying why that is because of the quality of your operations. Similarly, if you are a teleport who's, that's doing um, you know, a lot of transmission services into sometimes difficult parts of the world, you're doing it for deliberately for a low, lowest price point you can get to. Um, it gives an opportunity for you to show what that entails. Um, and for customers, and that's really what this is all intended to serve, for customers it is about the ability to select teleport vendors that deliver the price performance level that's appropriate for whatever their application might be. Um, and to know objectively what they're going to be getting when they make that purchase decision. So it's, it's all about transparency, it's all about objectivity, and about creating an international standard. Speaking of which, um, before we went live with this program um, 20 months ago, we worked, did some intensive work with a standards committee made up of WTA member operations and technology executives. And they developed an exhaustive list of standards 
um, that resulted in a questionnaire running about 170 questions at this point. But it covers, of course, the physical facilities um, and in just about every aspect you can imagine, business continuity, transmission chains, operating environment, meaning you know, the, kind of the geographic location you operate in, terrestrial, satellite, health and safety, security, network operations, even storage and spares. Uh, we have standards around those. And in addition to that, we also look at the critical human factor, the procedures that govern operation, whether it's how the teleport operator manages their uh, satellite and terrestrial capacity, whether it's, it's how they maintain service continuity, their information, physical, physical security, the difficult and never-ending job of managing change effectively so that you don't get caught out by it at the wrong moment, uh, similarly managing all of your configurations so that you know what's going on in your operation, and overall staying on top of service availability and performance process. So as I think you'll agree, it's a very, very comprehensive view of how a teleport delivers the services and the quality level it delivers. Our process is fairly straightforward. Um, we ask when, when, when teleport operators come to us and ask to be certified, we provide them with a very in-depth questionnaire, about 170 questions as I indicated. Um, they complete that, which is a difficult process, takes several hours of work because we ask a lot of detailed questions. Um, typically they'll put together a team of two or three people to do that. Um, we then take that uh, crunch the numbers in our model and come back and say, yes, we're able to certify you. But that sort of, we're going to declare very clearly that certification is based on self-assessment. That is, we have not validated the information. And it's available for a very limited time. We, we require provisional certifi cert provisionally certified teleports to um, recertify, go, go through that process again every year. Most teleport operators choose to proceed to the next step, which is full certification, and that involves an audit by a WTA licensed consultant. Uh, based on that audit, then the result of the audit, the audit report comes back to us, as well as going to the, um, the teleport operator. We're able to issue a, a uh, certification at one of four quality tiers from tier four, which is the highest, through tier one, which is the lowest. And I just want to mention in there that that report that, that is issued by the auditor is actually a very valuable document in addition to, to dealing with our standards. Uh, it always contains some specific recommendations. No matter how high quality the teleport is, there are always things that can be done better. And our auditors, based upon their in-depth experience, are often able to flag several things that, that perhaps deserve attention in the future. Um, that certification then gets renewed every three years based again on a repeated audit. So it's a, it's a pretty standard certification process, but uh, we think it's thorough enough to really have, have good meaning. So in that process, we coordinate the standards development and their gradual updates over time. We just recently are we're just wrapping up actually a big update of our questionnaire at this point. Um, we, of course, operate the program. We recruit and coordinate our auditors, and we are responsible for maintaining that certification database that is the teleport operators evidence of what they've achieved. We've uh, been very pleased over this last 20 months to have a, a, a really strong positive reaction from our market. So this is a list of uh, teleports that have completed the certification process. Some of them are actually still are, some of them that are not marked as being fully certified are actually still in process to get there. Um, and on top of this list we have already, we have an even longer list of, of teleports and companies that are interested in being certified and are currently at some stage of our process. So we were put a lot of work into this program to make sure that it would meet needs and that it would achieve the kind of adoption that would give a you know, certification standard true value to the, uh, the organizations going through certification. And I'm very pleased to say that we are, we're definitely getting there. We're getting to that tipping point that we've been looking forward to. So it's now my pleasure to turn, after that uh, introduction, it's now my pleasure to turn this over to a couple of people who really know what they're talking about. Um, the first one we're going to hear from is Dr. Matthias Reed, who is the Executive Vice President for Technical Operations at Signalhorn Trusted Networks. I'm going to have a conversation with him here. And uh, again, don't forget your question panel. If you have things that you want to ask that I'm not getting to, I hope you'll feel free to fill that in and I'll bring those into the conversation. So, uh, Matthias, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Well, well, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, your time. Um, we're really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Could you begin, sir, by telling us a little bit about your responsibilities at Signalhorn and the professional background that you bring, bring to them? 
Yeah, my professional background is I, I hold a doctorate in telecommunications and I'm working for more than 25 years in the visa business, leading various technical teams in design, implementation, operations, and maintenance of visa networks and teleports. Thank you. And there, at, what are your responsibilities there at Signalhorn? I believe you, Signalhorn has two teleports, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Uh, Signalhorn has two teleports, one in, in Germany, in uh, a place called Bagnang, and one in, in, the, in Switzerland called Leuk. Like, right. The yeah, Leuk yeah. teleport is a traditional PTT teleport which was erected in the 70s and also has, as such teleports have, uh, 32 meter C band antennas, while uh, Bagnang is much younger and was uh, designed and implemented around uh, the year 2000. Gotcha. And as, uh, as executive vice president for technical operations, if you could just tell us a little bit about what your what what is, it, what is an average day in your life like? Yes, uh, I'm <clears throat> I'm looking into into all the technical aspects of our networks in operation, and the networks include, of course, the assets at the teleport, with the target to provide the highest performance and quality to our customers with their applications. And around this, I'm looking into the uh, proper functioning of, of all the systems in optimization, in updating the systems, and, and uh, also in uh, supporting my teams, I have to say, in the elaboration of customized solutions. Yes, absolutely. A very, very large portfolio. So, um, could you tell us why Signalhorn chose to pursue certification of your uh, Loic and Bagnang teleports? Uh, what, what was your goal in, in pursuing that? Yeah, so the teleport certification was not the first uh, certification we did at all. So we are certified, our quality management system is certified according to ISO 9001, our data protection system is uh, certified according to ISO 27001. We have a special certification for uh, data security for payment card transactions, PCI DSS. And based on these existing certifications, we saw that such a certification has two benefits. One is it gives uh, an independent third party opinion for existing and future customers that as a certification what we really have in place and what we are doing. And on the other hand, it's not just for getting a piece of paper with a, a nice a signature on it. Uh, it triggers a lot of ideas going in a structured way through the certification and finding here and there topics for improvement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. although I think we have very excellent operations when you look into many, many details, you will always find the one or the other detail you did not think about yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are the ones that get you, that wake you up at 3, three o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the certification questionnaire, as I already indicated, is, is quite long. It's quite detailed. Um, so could you talk a bit about how you organized the effort to complete it and who in your organization, what kinds of, of job titles, if you will, uh, were involved? Yeah, so when I saw it first, I was a bit of shocked uh, <laughs> with, uh, about 50, with about 50 pages. And then the, the list of topics covered, which you had on one of your first slides here. And although, as you said, my responsibility is quite broad here in the organization, the questionnaire also covers topics uh, which I could not answer by myself. So what I did, I cut it into pieces according to the uh, topic and the experience and responsibility of colleagues. And I handed over the pieces to the colleagues and asked them to fill it in. And at the end, I, I verified it, of course. And then I compiled the responses for the final questionnaire. Interesting, interesting. Um, about, do you have any sense of how many person hours it took overall to get that job done? Because I'm sure our audience would like to hear that. We did not reach it to the hour. So we did it for two teleports. And 
all those these are two independent technical facilities, all our processes and how we work and so on is the same. So uh, we could do a lot by, after filling in the first questionnaire, I did it first for Wagner, we could fill in the Loi questionnaire by copy-paste in, in, in a large amount of, of questions. Sure. In total, I think we spent maybe 20, 20 hours for filling it in. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that is a substantial commitment, so thank you very much for making that. Um, I'm just curious if you can recall now, what were some of the areas that did not, that where you needed to go to additional people in your organization? In other words, what parts of that questionnaire reached outside of your normal technical operations uh, sphere? Oh, it was uh, in, in the area of the data security. We have here uh, experts in-house, of course. Then about the supply of electricity to the individual racks, how this is done in detail. Of course, in my role, I know it in general, how we, we do it and that we have uh, quite a high level on this. But uh, for answering the, the questions, I, I had to consult with the, with the colleagues. Of course, of course, that makes all the sense in the world. Thank you. Um, all right, so we went ahead. You know, you went ahead and filled out this this questionnaire. Twenty hours of of, of hard labor. Uh, we came back and said, you know, excellent. We're able to certify you. You chose to go to the next step to have an audit, which you know, because because of your commitment to certifications, that's no surprise. Um, could you talk a bit about how you prepared for the on-site inspections that that are part of that full certification. What, what, what was the sort of the work and the thinking in, in getting ready for that? After filling in the questionnaire, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so we, we have everything always in order, and uh, we submitted the questionnaires, and we were waiting for the auditor <laughs> to verify our answer. Very, very good. Very, very good. I mean, I, like I mean, the the major the major point in these certifications, also for the quality management system, for example, it, it's the point that you have to live it. It's not an annual effort that you sit in your office and you invent stories or whatever, fill in questionnaires uh, and and describe how it should be. So no, we are living it. So it is as it is. And and therefore, after filling in this question, I didn't do anything. Just waiting. Very good. That's the best possible answer, I think. Um, you didn't have to run around sweeping up the uh, sweeping up the things, sweeping things out of sight. Um, no. Okay. So here, you you can come seeing us. It's clean. Well, I look forward to I look forward very much to that opportunity. Thank you. I've seen your beautiful videos on your website, which I recommend to anybody just on the call. Just go to Signalhorn's website and just watch the the videos that play of this. I made that. I think this is the Loic facility up on a hill. It's uh, it's quite something. Yep. Um, so, in it, so your your facilities were ultimately um, certified at Tier Three. Congratulations on that. In addition Thank to just the certification, um, what insights or recommendations did you take away from the audit process or the audit report that you th thought were valuable? Uh, I mean, uh, looking at the questionnaire, what what was obvious to me is that the questionnaire is very general. It covers a lot of a lot of topics, and not all of the topics are, from my point of view, relevant for all businesses. Mm. For example, there's the one question, if all antennas can see, have line of sight, can see the full uh, geostationary orbit. Mm. I think this is a nice to have, but for our business, with fixed VSAT networks, this is not really crucial. Uh, because we point the antenna once to, to a satellite and then the antenna is there and we have some 50 large antennas in total. But this is not an, not an issue for me. And uh, I also understand that uh, beside a few other things, this was the reason why we did not reach uh, the level four. But I'm, I'm satisfied uh, with, the, with the level three, of course. And what what we what we saw and what we had to think about was the in the area of procedures and standards about service continuity there were a, a few good questions triggering internal thinking how to how to modify the processes uh, we had in place and 
realizing some improvement. Well, thank you. I'm actually taking a note about your uh, your domestic arc comment because that's again we're this is I don't think we're ever going to quite be done with this process. Um, so I'm going to take that back to our standards committee and ask them about you know figuring out the importance of that thing. We can obviously do we can obviously work on that in terms of its scoring. So, um, so Vince, this, I, I mean, it, it, it depends on the business. It should not be you should not understand it as a criticism on, on the questionnaire. Uh, I had a conversation the other day with somebody who is providing a, a TV service for Africa, and I was wondering about the poor setup of the uplink and he said, "Oh, what does it matter? They have half of the day no electricity anyhow. <laughs> so if there's an outage, it doesn't matter." <laughs> and it's, oh, it's really, it's really subject to the business. We are providing services primarily to enterprise customers, Western, European, American, and so on, they expect a service quality as we have it in Europe or in the U.S., and this is our standard, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've been through this process. You, you had some expectations coming into it about what its value would be, and having come to the other side of this, uh, completing it until your, your next recertification, how do you explain the value of the certification to whether it's within your own organization or to customers that you meet with? I mean, for me, the most important point is having a, an independent third-party evaluation of what we have in place and how we operate. I, I mean, on the sales or marketing side, you can always invent stories and, and talk to potential customers about how great you are and what you are doing. But having an independent opinion, opinion uh, confirming this, it's really a great value. Okay. And and then the the second point I I see is the structured approach of the questionnaire going through all these detailed questions. You mentioned the number, how many questions these are, really trigger some thinking about the one or the other detail. We are operating. See the technical facilities since decades. I think we are doing a good job, but there is here and there a detail we did not think about in the past couple of years. And and such a comprehensive questionnaire really gives you the one or the other idea to think about. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a that's a great statement because the unfortunately the way that we often learn about these problems is when they actually are problems when we have some sort of failure, so anything you can do in advance is, is of high value. Well, thank you. I'm going to now bring sure. Angus Blackwood, our auditor, into the into the conversation, uh, and we'll leave you know we'll leave you um, leave you live, Matthias, because you may want to, to weigh in on this. But Angus, are you with us? I am. Thank you. Excellent. Could you just briefly tell us a bit about your company and your professional background that, that makes makes you an auditor? Yeah. Um, Pleased to. Um, so I've got uh, roughly 30 years experience in the satellite uh, industry, working for companies like Airbus, uh, European Space Agency, and Arkiva. And uh, at Arkiva, I ended up running um, all their international teleports for probably about 14, 15 years, and uh, had quite a bit of experience in uh, building, uh, consolidating, uh, improving teleport operations in that time and uh, recently I started a business uh, Hawk CX which is all around just doing that for other teleport operators so focusing on how to improve infrastructure, how to improve service management, how to improve uh, supplier management, how to consolidate, how to save costs etc. So that's really what I'm focused on and that's why I guess auditing is, is all part of that process to understand uh, the, the state of a teleport to start off with then to understand what the goals of the uh, teleport operator is, um, and then designing a program around those goals to achieve those goals. So that's uh, really where I come into this, and uh, up to now I've done, I think, a total of six uh, WTA uh, certification audits over the last 18 months, uh, and they've all been very interesting. Um, big, big learning opportunity for everybody involved, I think. Yes, you're. Yeah, you're the. You're definitely the old man of the sea, as as far as this program is concerned. Uh, I just. I've been wanting to ask this for a long time, and I never remember why. Hawk, what does Hawk CX mean? Ah, uh, Hawk CX. So the CX in Hawk is all about the uh, customer experience. Uh, okay. Believe strongly in, in providing a really good customer experience. That's how you get a 
a good thriving business. Uh, if a business is providing great service, then generally customers flock to it. And uh, so the customer experience is very important. That's all about service provision and the technology uh, and, and, and the service operation and how the customer perceives the overall service capability. And then the Hawk is really just, uh, you know, we're, we've got a keen eye for uh, spotting uh, issues and resolving them, really. So it's, that's why it's a Hawk CX. Oh, there you go. That's one of the best explanations I've ever heard of a company name. Um, so well done. So um, just to, I'm going to sort of dive into the background, if, you, if I may, a little bit. You just recently actually did a, a complete review of our certification questionnaire and scoring system. We made some changes. Uh, they were reviewed by our committee. They're actually being implemented right now. Um, so that gave you a, real, a bit of a refresher on all this. From your position as an auditor, could you tell us at a pretty you know, high level what the questionnaire covers and why it covers those things? So yes, I mean you've you've already given an overview of the sort of large scope of the of the questionnaire and and the sixty or so areas, um, fifty nine pages I think over fifty pages, Matthias. So uh, fifty nine pages of questions, uh, certainly a, a complete overview of a. Uh, teleports operation uh, and going into quite a lot of detail. Not as much detail as it could do. For example, as Matthias said, that, you know, for ISO 27001, we'd go into a lot more detail on security, but covers a complete uh, overview, complete sort of 360 degree view of the teleports operation. And that's starting really, really with the infrastructure. Uh, you mentioned um, business continuity is the first, first item, but it, it's really around the infrastructure the electrical infrastructure, the air conditioning, the fire protection, all the security, physical security. And then looking at the various platforms, uh, transmission chains and antennas and the robustness of those. And then uh, onto the network operations and the, uh, the master control room and the control room uh, capability uh, and staffing. Uh, and then uh, really looking at the process side, looking at uh, all the service management process, incident management, change management, problem management, and uh, information security as well. Um, so I would sort of characterize the, the questionnaire as, as, as something that provides enough uh, depth to go to be meaningful to a, to a customer who's looking at a, a placing services with a teleport and, and enough scope to provide the full a to Z of, of all the areas you'd be interested in uh, if, 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 if you're a customer placing services there. So I, I think that's probably the way I'd describe it. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, actually, a question from, my, from our um, audience, that I, this is a good moment to drop into this. Um, it was something that, that came up in, in Tyson's comments as well. Do the questions in the qu the question is is um, does does the questionnaire provide an opportunity for different kinds of businesses or markets to to be taken into account? I mean, some teleports, as Matthias said, um, you know, they're in the enterprise business. Uh, somebody else's main focus may be in government. Somebody else's main focus may be in broadcast. And uh, I mean, I I know the answer to that question, but you do you want to take it? Absolutely. So I would say yes, because the questionnaire focuses on the on the cap on the infrastructure and the capability, the, the technical, uh, uh, physical capability and the operational capability. So it does not, for example, look at uh, it doesn't go back into the pre base band uh, for, for those technical uh, uh, in the audience. It doesn't go pre base band looking at play out, for example, or it doesn't look at uh, VSAT hubs, that kind of thing. So what it's doing is it's looking at the transmission chain onwards and it's looking at the overall capability of the of the teleport to produce and provide that, that reliable service. So I, I think it does and this has come up quite a bit uh, in in the audits but I think we've, we've, we've left the teleport feeling that they it's it's absolutely relevant to them uh, and, and just as a mark of that the I think the signal horn Audit. There were only 10 minor ch changes to the overall questionnaire by the time I'd finished the, the, the two-day audit of, of, of each of the facilities. So, so of the hundreds of questions in the questionnaire, there were only 10, 10 minor changes. And that's been repeated across all the six uh, teleports that I've audited so far. So I think it is very relevant, yes. 
Yeah. I know there are some specific questions where in which we say, if you serve government military, here's three questions for you. If you serve, if you're, you know, your service is in media and broadcast, here's some specific questions. So, and and if you, you know, if you're not in that business, then that that's fine. You don't have to uh, either answer those or have those counted against your score. So, yeah. And and, so, and those questions are very much a minority uh, overall. Uh, and course. most of the questions are, are are very much more general. Of course. Okay, so we know we now know how Matthias prepared for his on-site audit, which is a great great answer. How do you, for for mere mortals, how do you recommend that uh, that they prepare for an on-site audit? Um, okay. Uh, first of all, it's a good idea just to have a chat with the auditor. Um, so once you've you've chosen your auditor, have a chat with them and see how they uh, want to come in and uh, how they want to prepare and, and what, the, what the audit will actually involve. So what I do is I, I ask for some information up front uh, from the teleports. So just some basic information around sort of electrical schematics and layouts of the technical facilities and the fiber, you know, terrestrial fiber routing and, and, and transmission chain schematics and, and, and then some service uh, performance metrics, that kind of thing. So, so I, I, I get some or all of that information up front. It doesn't matter if I don't get it. It just means the day is going to be a bit longer or, or the day and a half is going to be a bit longer when I'm actually at the facility. So providing information up front and understanding what the audit is going to entail is very helpful for, for teleports. Um, and then secondly, and, and Matthias mentioned this, is having the right people available. So uh, it's, good, it's a good idea to have people available who are sort of experts in the area. So it's typical that I get a, a network specialist uh, c comes into the meeting to answer some of the more technical questions around net networking uh, and likewise for information security as Matthias mentioned and also RF. Um, and then I don't think there's a facility I've visited that I haven't talked to the electrical engineer uh, as the uh, some of the questions that I ask are quite detailed around there, looking for single points of failure in the in the electrical distribution system. So, really having the right people there on on the day, and having a senior sponsor just to understand the uh, business goals of the teleport really helps just create context for the for the audit itself. And then finally, um, I'd say yes, you, you can you, you can trust that your facilities and your procedures are going to be fine. You don't need to do anything in, in a way to prepare. But what I would say is that it's a good idea to make sure your facility is tidy. I think the Signal Horn facility was very tidy when I visited it. Uh, some facilities are tidier than others, let's put it that way. Um, it just makes a good impression if you've got rid of the boxes and tidy the cupboards and you've got a load of cables on the floor. So that would be my, my recommendation. <laughs> sort of as though you're preparing to have some guests over for dinner, yes. You, you want to clean yeah. up a bit. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That's 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 very very useful. So you so you show up for this audit, and when by the time you do, you have um, a a report from us that details all of the the claims made by the teleport operator in their self assessment for their professional provisional certification. You have your advanced conversations with them, the content they've delivered to you. So what are the most important things that you look for during that, that precious time when you're on the ground? Sure. Well, um, I mean, the, the whole point of my visit is to validate the, uh, the answers to the, to the questionnaire, obviously. So it's really starting at the beginning of the questionnaire and going all the way through it. Uh, and the way that I, 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 I typically do that, the way I think it works best for the teleports is to is to, is to start off at the sort of the macro level and, 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 and have a chat about the teleport, uh, uh, about its customers, about its services, about what it's trying to achieve, about the market it's in, uh, just to set the context and then uh, talk about the, a bit about the history actually. It helps to put everything in context as well in terms of how the teleport's arrived at the, at the capability it's got and, 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 and the operational sort of processes that it's got and the staffing that it's got as well. Um, so really that macro uh, assessment is looking at the overall capability uh, of the teleport. It includes its, its, its location, its connectivity, local services, accessibility, line of sight, uh, frequency restrictions and that kind of thing. Um, and then having done that, and that probably takes about an hour, an hour and a half at the beginning of the day, then I typically we go on a tour and, and then we see what it's like in, in reality and uh, just go around uh, the whole site from the bottom up really talking about the 
um, all the infrastructure and, and a bit of show and tell so that I can see actually how the infrastructure is built and how it's operated and, and see stuff with my, with my own eyes. Um, and that's where I'm really looking, uh, beginning to look at the micro level. So looking in at the detail, asking some questions to validate the answers to the, uh, 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 validate the answers in the questionnaire. And, 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 and that means that I can ask for examples of situations or examples of how sparing is done or how, um, uh, how maintenance is done, look at records uh, and that kind of thing. So I find that the, you know, it, it's good if the teleport operator's already got some examples there and I've, you know, I've, I've warned them that I'm going to do that. So it, it's good to run through some examples to see some real instances of, of what, they're, what they're claiming in the in the in the questionnaire, and 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 then I, I kind of end up, you know, the the sort of second half of the of the visit is taken up with process and operational standards and the way the actual teleport runs uh, and how incident management works, change management, problem management, etc. And we often talk about uh, the customer metrics as well at, at that point, and then we we end up the day kind of brings it all together in terms of looking at the capability and the infrastructure in the morning and the processes and the results of the operation. So how, 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 how effective the operation is overall uh, in the afternoon. And that, that gives me all the, the evidence I need to uh, validate the audit, but also make some recommendations, as you mentioned earlier, Robert, make some recommendations as to some of the areas that for, for improvement. It could be infrastructure improvements I see. It could be uh, 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 transmission chain improvements that I see, or quite often there's process improvements that could be made, um, uh, and and that kind of thing. So that that's that's what I look for in the in the audit. Uh, it's it's a full day. Uh, in some cases, it's a day and a half um, per teleport, depending on the size of the teleport and the uh, and the amount actually the teleport operator wants to talk <laughs> and discuss mm -hmm. things. Um, so it's very much a discussion as well. It, it, it's, it's very much a, uh, yes, I'm probing into some areas, but actually it's a discussion about what I think is best practice, what I've seen elsewhere, what I've experienced myself uh, that works well um, in different situations. Uh, so it's very much a, a discussion, and, and, and there's, a, there's as much support and suggestions for doing things better as there are sort of challenges in how you're currently doing things. Sure. Uh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I think it's very valuable. As, as always, it's that. Uh, as you say, it's, it's the conversation ultimately that can deliver some of the greatest value, even though it doesn't show up in any objective way. Um, so you've mentioned some of the things you probe into based upon your experience now doing six of these, not to mention another 30 years behind that. What are some of the most common, common reasons for uh, service quality problems? What are the ones that, that leap out at you that, that uh, perhaps you know, some, some of them people are all aware of, but there's others that may be surprising? Yeah, I, I, think, it, uh, I think there's various um, sort of common causes, if you like. But very much depends on if the teleport is a new build or if it's a, if it's a bit of an older teleport, maybe a 30-year-old teleport, um, and, and also the culture of the management in terms of uh, continuous service improvement. So let me tackle the tackle the, uh, the infrastructure side first. So if infrastructure is, um, has got some single points of failure, um, so for example, if an electrical distribution system's got single points of failure and uh, you know, the teleport's unlucky enough to have a failure at that, at that technical point, then um, obviously that's going to bring the whole teleport down or large parts of the teleport or platforms down and that could have a huge impact on on customers and, and, and although that's not common, when it does happen, everyone remembers and all your customers remember for a long time. So those who've been through the, that sort of experience, they know to keep a close eye on uh, infrastructure, making sure that they can make it as robust as possible and avoid all single points of failure or where there is a single point of failure, having a good operational process that minimize the, uh, the impact of that failure. Um, so I'd say that the, um, electrical distribution, um, uh, potential problems or flooding problems or fire problems uh, or even air conditioning problems, uh, sort of infrastructure problems that affect multiple platforms and multiple services at one time, they can be uh, a, a very much a headache. Um, so that's the first class of problem. The second 
class of problem I suppose I've seen is where teleports have designed the transmission chains with um, possibly a lack of redundancy, so a lack of backup, and that could be because the the markets they're dealing in doesn't justify the uh, backups. Um, but where there's no operational process to uh, to, to, to switch a spare in very quickly, uh, uh, that can cause significant issues for customers. And so I suppose that class of, of quality problem would be a mismatch between the customer expectations and the, and the teleport uh, uh, platform design, so transmission chain design. Uh, that needs to match the SLAs, the service levels demanded by, by the market. Uh, and then the third area really, and this is possibly the more common one that I see these days, because a lot of teleports I see are very well engineered, um, but I see quite a few uh, sort of challenges around the process area, um, and, and maturity of processes is absolutely key because um, it, it's sort of the process is the glue between the person and the equipment, so it's, it, 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 the process has got to provide the operators with the right information to operate the various uh, services and systems. And if the processes are not fit for purpose, then that can cause significant issues. And they tend to be quite um, systemic issues uh, because if you haven't got a good problem management process in place, you don't capture the trends. So you don't fix the processes. So you, you have a continuous sort of service disimprovement, if you like, rather than continuous service improvement. So the better teleports will have a, 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 me a mechanism which catch it, captures the incidents, the outages, and even the events that don't cause outages but could cause outages, like near misses, and tracks the, uh, dives into the root cause of those uh, events or incidents and comes up with a, uh, with a fix for the root cause uh, that means that there won't be a, a recurrence of that type of incident. Um, so that quite a lot of my discussions with teleports are around that continuous service improvement process um, because outages will occur, the, the mark of a good teleport is what it does as a result of the outage uh, and, and what improvements it puts in place. So um, th those, those, are really the, th those are really the classes, the infrastructure angle, the platform side and then the, 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 the processes, uh, the maturity of processes. Thank you, Angus. I, I really, I, I was extremely clear. I mean, I, what I liked about what you said is basically, from a physical facility standpoint, there are always going to be vulnerabilities. You work all the time to, you know, gradually um, deal with them, but there's always, always going to be vulnerabilities. And the question is going to be, what plans have you got to deal with them? How, how are you going to work? How are you going to do a workaround on an operational basis for whatever vulnerabilities you have? And absolutely, the, the root cause analysis, boy, it's, it's something that I think it runs against human nature, but nonetheless, a, a good teleport operators do an exceptional job at it. Sure. So you've seen quite a few teleports, ones you've been responsible for managing and one you, ones you've audited. Just a final question here. What, what do you, in your view, you think sets a, sets a, sets a tier three, tier four teleport uh, apart from sort of the average ones, where where do they really shine? And so that you, when you walk in, you sort of get that feeling that you you know uh, you know what you're dealing with. Well, I think that uh, I think it's so. I've already talked about the fact that the, the, the sort of the the questionnaire is a sort of covers a 360 degree look at a teleport. So it's it's all the things I've mentioned. So being being the upper quartile of all the all the areas that I've mentioned. Uh, and there's one other area as well, which is really around um, customer feedback and employee engagement. Um, so I would, I would see that the very good uh, high-level teleports have got extremely good employee engagement, which means that the tools to do the job for the operators, for the engineers, you know, are fit for purpose. So they've got the means to do their job. They're highly motivated. They've got a purpose to their everyday life, and, and they understand the strategy of the uh, of the teleport business, um, and 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 that engagement means that they are engaged with customers, and uh, they they follow through on service issues, uh, or even where there's not a service issue, they'll follow through and talk to customers about events that may may be happening or may have happened that might affect their service. So it's it's a sort of an X factor for me. Is that, you know is the is the employee engagement there? Uh, 
uh, you know, do people look up from the desk when you walk in the room to talk about their services that they're managing for their customers? That's that's uh, that's one of the indicators. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the other the other area would be the customer uh, feedback. So I would say uh, good teleports, good businesses uh, take feedback from their customers on a regular basis, and they do something with that feedback. They create service improvement plans or or team improvement plans. You know, they they take the feedback and they improve, and then they talk to the customer about the improvements they're they're making and they've made, uh, and and that again engenders uh, good uh, employee engagement generally because they can see that the business cares about the services that the employees are looking after, and the business cares about the customers who who they're running the services for. So it's a sort of virtuous circle. Um, so that I think that if you've got the infrastructure. Uh, right, you've got the platforms right, you've got the processes right, then the thing that separates uh, the very best from the from the also rounds would be around employee engagement and customer uh, customer feedback, customer improvements plans. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very, <laughs> actually it's an inspiring answer. It is ultimately it comes down to the human factors. Well, we've reached the, the, the end of our, our, uh, our interviews, if you will. There's a couple more questions from the, the, our audience that I'd like to share out there. Uh, the first one of them, uh, Matthias, is for you. You were kind enough to say it took you about 20 hours of staff time to, uh, to go through the, to do the questionnaire and turn it back to us. Overall, how long, from end to end of this process, from the time you decided that you wanted to do it to the time you got your full audit, about how long was that? You mean the, the process from the invitation until we got the certificate, or? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh, I have to admit that I do not really remember. It was a few months. Of. Yeah, I, I, I recall it was. This one was pretty brisk, so I think it was four months, maybe. And sometimes they go on for longer than that because. It was. It was rather quick. Um, we we've been very much motivated to. Or we had the target for becoming the first, yes. and and this was speeding up uh, certain activities. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, I just uh, your your CEO Robert Coverness is a member of our board, and he was he was very actively a supporter of this program. So when it when it became available, he said, "We're doing this." So we, we appreciate it. That's yeah. very much, and thank you so much for for the time that you put into it. One other question, which I can actually answer, is um, whether in this process, because you, you, Matthias, you referenced the fact that your company has many other impressive certifications, and one of the questions that was asked was, how do we at WTA deal with that in our questionnaire? And the answer is, we actually have a question about it. Uh, we have a, a checklist, basically, of other certifications, and we and we provide some credit for that because obviously, if a company is devoted to having its its operations or its uh, facilities certified by by other bodies that is a sign in itself of quality so it very much counts um, there being no other questions I guess I'll, I'll ask Angus or uh, and, and Matthias are there any final comments you'd like to offer you don't have to but I just thought I'd, you've been listening to all of this so I wondered if, I, if anything you'd like to close with Matthias after you sorry I didn't get it Oh, Matthias, I'm sorry. I, I, do you have any sort of closing thoughts? You've been listening to Angus now uh, for for about 15 minutes, and I'm just curious whether you have any closing words of wisdom you would like to share with us. So uh, Angus was the auditor at our teleports. I appreciated very much the cooperation with him, uh, professionalism, knowledge, experience, and so on. I think it was overall an excellent uh, experience. Doing this certification, I'm happy that we that we did it, and I, I I can only recommend it to to other operators to go through the process because the point is one point is of course to have a certificate at the end, but the more important thing is triggering the thoughts about the one or the other details which were a bit neglected in the past. Well, thank you, Matthias. And from a technical leader of your standing, uh, that, that's really a great compliment. Um, Angus? Um, I would say that the uh, I really enjoy the audits. I think they're a fantastic opportunity to meet other people in the industry. And hopefully, the teleports get 
something out of it, uh, as Matthias just, just explained, in terms of um, not just doing the questionnaire, but having ideas for how to improve in the, you know, improve the operation and in the, in the future. And I might say that actually most of the improvements that um, teleports uh, end up making do not cost a lot of money. They are more around the process side rather than the infrastructure side, because as I said, the infrastructure tends to be pretty good standard. Um, so uh, I think that the audits are enjoyable and they should be. They should be a learning opportunity for both myself and the and the teleports and the most recent one I did uh, in Norway was 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 great fun and we ended up having a good laugh at the end at the end of the day. Um, I, I did have a bit of a shaky start though because I I got lost on the way to the teleport and this is a common theme having visited so many facilities in my in my career that people who are at the facility often say oh yeah it's easy to find it's very obvious because it is obvious to them because they've been working there for several years it's not obvious to a visitor so don't forget if you're going to be going to invite an auditor to include a map in the information that would be most welcome by us thank you well Angus don't the big satellite dishes give it away they do if they're, unless they're <laughs> hidden behind trees as, as you find in Norway <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well, listen, thank you, gentlemen, both very much for sharing your experience with us. Uh, I want for all the people who joined us, I thank you very much for doing so. As I said, this will be available as a recording. You'll receive an email when it's available, so you're welcome to share it with your colleagues, uh, and as well as this presentation will be available to you. So thanks much for joining us. We look forward to the next, next one of these webinars, and I wish you a very good uh, day or a good evening. <laughs>